Assalamualaikum everybody. Today we are going to talk about drugs that are acting on the gonadal and reproductive system. And today's subtopic is uh, one of the last few subtopics we have been talking about for so long. So this is androgen and anabolic steroids. And we will talk about anti-androgens. Okay. So, wait a minute. Yes. So, what did you learn from this video? Any main points that you want to highlight here? I'm waiting for your response in the chat box. Okay. Okay, good. Yes. Good. Okay, Afsha, Shagufta, Neha, uh, Fifa, Yusra, you all are correct, okay? That they, these are risky, okay? Uh, they might have advantage, okay? But the advantages are not for a longer period of time. They are there for a very shorter period of time, okay? So, testosterone is actually a hormone that is produced in the male body, okay? And the male, okay, basically the androgens are the hormones that are produced by the male, okay. And they give characteristic to the male, all right. And this testosterone is the main androgenic hormone, okay. So let's read about it, okay. Testosterone is synthesized primarily in the lydic cell of the testis under the influence of LH. What is LH? Luteinizing hormone, okay. So testosterone is metabolized to the more potent, uh, uh, to the more potent 5-alpha dihydroxy. Uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. 5-alpha dihydrotestosterone by 5-alpha reductase. So there are two isoforms of this enzyme. Type one. Wait, I've got a message. Oh no. Shagufta, see, you have to look at it that what kind of uh, even the natural uh, supplements that you are you you are taking, okay? You have to just see that they are good to your body, okay? That's why we say research about it, okay? Uh, I tell you what, uh, a couple of years back, okay, because uh, I I do have tendency to gain weight very easily. So a couple of years back, one of my colleagues told me that, uh, you know, I should consume, what was that? I, uh, there was some kind of a, you know, mixture of, I think it was cucumber and it was, I'm forgetting, I, I think I'm forgetting what was it, oh my God. It was, uh, it's very bitter. I'm forgetting the name actually of that vegetable. So bad of me. <laughs> okay. So it's very bitter in taste. Okay. So basically my colleague told me that, um, oh my God, how can I forget his name? My memory. Okay. So, um, you know, my, one of my friends told me to consume it. Okay. And um, I, I came here, uh, I came at home, okay, and I tried to research about it, that how many people uh, consumed it and how many people get benefited by it. So, um, uh, you know, there were several papers published that uh, because of that particular vegetable, a uh, poisonous uh, chemical is there in the vegetable and people can actually die because of that, okay. So you need to take care of what you're consuming, okay? Uh, I think the the first step that you should have in your mind is do not consume anything that your 
you don't taste it doesn't taste good to you okay uh, so many people tell me so many different uh, re- re- rem- remedies about losing weight but seriously if it doesn't feel good to you if you don't like its taste then don't continue with it at all no 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 it wasn't beetroot it wasn't beetroot beetroot is good oh beetroot is so good i'll tell you guys okay it was i think is bitter grout oh, okay all right guys let's move on here okay this is a very interesting topic i tell you okay so there are two isoforms of this enzyme type 1 which is expressed in skin and liver so you should see here that look the enzyme is in the skin and liver and the enzyme is also in the posterior seminal vesicle hair follicle so just imagine two on, uh, on two major uh, you can say classes of categories okay we have uh, this enzyme and it's uh converting testosterone into a more potent form right okay so testosterone is extensively bound 98% mostly to ssbg which is sex steroid binding globulin and also to albumin i'm sure you know what is that okay so then is natural testosterone can be administered transdermally or transmuscularly if you remember uh in the very start of the lecture in the start of the series i can i should say we discussed that testosterone is a steroidal in nature okay so when we are administering it it means that it is going to stay in our body and it can actually uh, cross the membranes very easily right okay so synthetic androgens let's talk about it i hope there's nothing written here okay all right so synthetic androgens the 17 substituted testosterone ester testosterone propionate testosterone uh, enantate and testosterone cipionate are administered by injection usually as depot in oil what is depot what is depot guys tell me in the chat box here tell me what is the depot form Ajit, depot. What is a depot formulation? What is that? I'm waiting for your answer. Slowly release drug. Okay. Did you try to search on? okay so basically the body is actually an injection okay when you inject it all right it basically goes and binds to uh, the tissues into your body okay and the globulin into your body all right and then it is released slowly and gradually okay read about it okay all right then is 17 alkyl testosterone derivative include uh, methyl testosterone fluoxy mesteron and oxy uh, oxymethylon absorption of these oral agents is greater if they are administered sublingually thus avoiding the large hepatic first pass effect nandrolone and oxandrolone are testosterone derivatives with about a 5 to 10 fold higher anabolic to andro uh, androgenic ratio then testosterone itself nandrolone is administered parenterally oxandrolone is an oral agent wait a minute okay so now talking about the actions of these uh, adrenergic drugs okay so we have two kinds of actions okay one is muscle development other is a male characteristic okay so development of the male characteristic we are going to uh, 
refer them to as androgenic okay and when we'll talk about the muscle development we'll talk about them as anabolic okay so let's talk about the actions okay androgens form a complex with a specific intracellular receptor a member of the nuclear receptor family and interact with specific genes to modulate differenti differentiation development and growth uh, if you remember i talked to you earlier as well if you have a molecule which is a steroidal in nature and they would pass through the cell membrane very easily okay so inside in the cytoplasm all right there would be receptors and those receptors would actually receive the steroid natured uh, the, uh, these molecules okay and then they would actually uh, bind they would then activate uh, uh, different subunits okay and then those subunits would actually go to the DNA and then transcription and translation of a specific genes would be there now when I talk about transcription and translation and production of a specific kind of proteins okay so that means I'm talking about muscle development I am talking about development here right everybody because protein is related to the development right okay so androgenic action androgens stimulate the differentiation and development of wolfian structures including the epididymis seminal vessel prostate and penis androgens stimulate the development and maintenance of male secondary sexual characteristics so you see here on my right hand side i have attached a diagram okay so this is the wolfian tube okay and uh, uh, just uh, here we have mullerian uh, tube as well okay so the pink tube mullerian tube okay it will actually develop into the female system okay and this is actually present in the fetus okay it's present in the zygote you can say that uh, in the fetus you can say okay so when the baby develops okay then they differentiation happens you see here differentiation is written right so this is differentiation we are talking about that the wolfian tube duct actually develops okay however in females this tube uh, uh, you can say regress okay they do not develop uh, and uh, the female duct develop because of which they develop certain characteristics okay all right so another action which is very famous is the anabolic action all right i don't know why it's uh, okay a a it should be b all right okay so anabolic steroids cause acceleration of epiphyseal closure i hope you all remember i showed to you the diagram where bone was there and then epiphyseal closure was shown right so this this causes acceleration of that and they result in linear growth at puberty so anabolic steroids can ca uh, cause an increase in muscle mass and lead to a positive nitrogen balance. When we talk about positive nitrogen balance, the more nitrogen um, would be there in the body, more amino acids would be produced and more proteins would be produced. Obviously, it has negative effects also, but right now we are discussing the positive side. Later on, we'll be the devil's advocate. Okay. So behavioral effects of anabolic steroids include aggressiveness and increased libido huh okay then we have a uh, pre pubertal and post pubertal hypogonadism okay any any men who have this issue so we use uh, testosterone for them okay androgen promotes growth and sexual maturation and maintain male secondary sexual characteristic libido and potency it also treats it helps it also helps to treat anemia so uh, androgens stimulate the secretion of erythropoietin i'm sure you all have studied about that okay so androgens have large uh, have largely been supplanted by recombinant erythropoietin for anemia but they may be effective in some cases of bone marrow hyperplasia bone marrow hyperplasia when the bone marrow is not enough okay 
all right then is estrogen dependent breast cancers so we use testosterone to treat these as well okay all right then wasting disorders in aids or uh, or after severe burns all right in order to promote muscle development we use them illicit use by athletes large doses of androgens increase the accent extent and rate of muscle formation and may increase the intensity of training okay then we have hereditary angioedema angioedema is this that beneath the skin okay there is edema all right so this portion of the face all right it actually swells all right so androgens are used to treat hereditary angioedema based on androgen dependent increase in c1 competent inhibitor so i'm not going into the depth of it because then it will consume a lot of time okay just keep in mind that there is an inhibitor all right uh, and because of which Oh, the entire thing is happening okay all right then is the combination of testosterone or methyl testosterone with estrogens either esterified estrogen or estradiol may be used for menopausal hormonal therapy when estrogen alone have not provided adequate therapeutic responses okay all right so adverse effects and contraindications um like we just saw in the video okay so androgens and anabolic steroids produce decreased testicular testo uh, testicular function edema and altered plasma lipids so the bad part is it increases ldl and it decreases hdl okay then these agents called it causes masculinization in women uh, it causes plasma fibrinolytic activity causing severe bleeding with con uh, concomitant anti coagulant therapy 17 alkyl substituted androgens but not testosterone ester preparation are associated with increase in hepatic enzyme hyperbilirubinemia and cholestic hepatitis so this is cholestic hepatitis is more linked to gallstone which may result in jaundice long term use in associated uh, long term use is associated with liver tumors androgens and anabolic steroids are contraindicated in pregnant women and in patients with carcinoma of the prostate or hepatic renal or cardiovascular disease you know why then we'll talk about the anti androgens so these impair the action or synthesis of the endogenous androgens so oh, oh okay so first of all we'll talk about flutamide uh, bicalutamide and then uh, nilutamide okay so flutamide is a steroidal oral anti androgen that acts as a competitive androgen receptor antagonist okay and when it co it's competitive it means it can easily enter into the cytoplasm by crossing the cell membrane okay then we have uh, nilutamide and bicalutamide are non steroidal androgen receptor antagonists with better specificity specificity for the androgen receptor and have a larger half life that permits once a day dosing rather than three times a day for finasteride this drug we'll study in the next slide uh so these drugs are useful in the treatment of prostatic carcinoma and are highly efficacious when combined with long term uh gnrh agonist therapy so adverse effects include oh gynecomastia elevation in liver enzyme chest pain and gi disturbances these agents are highly teratogenic so teratogenic is actually when physiological abnormalities happen in the babies okay when uh, they are inside mother okay and if the mother consumes those drugs so the babies 
are affected. I tell you, once there was a medicine uh, that was applied by the ladies in order to avoid the, st the stretch marks. Okay, so imagine that medicine was so teratogenic that the uh, newborn babies were there without limbs. Okay, so one has to take care of that. All right, then we have finasteride. So it inhibits type 2, 5-alpha reductase, thereby reducing the production of the potent androgen 5-alpha dihydrotestosterone. Finasteride is used to treat benign prostatic hypertrophy and male pattern baldness. So it decreases prostate volume and increases urine flow. Then we have deuteride. So it inhibits both type 1 and type 2 5 alpha reductase and is more potent than finasteride. Serum dihydro uh, tachysterol levels can be reduced by more than 90% in two weeks. So it is used to treat BPH and baldness. All right. Then we have uh, ketoconazole, uh, which is very famous antifungal agent. So it blocks multiple P450 dependent steps in uh, steroidogenesis, including desmolas. Uh, so it can be used to treat uh, precocious puberty and is used to treat heroism in, for example, PCOs. So basically, uh, this heritism is actually development of excessive amount of ma uh, hair on the female face, okay? Then we have spironolactone. Oh, I have only three minutes. So it antagonizes the binding of both androgen and aldosterone at their respective receptors. It also decreases the activity of steroidogenic uh, enzyme 17 hydroxylase so it is used as a potassium sparing diuretic and to treat heritism in women usually in combination with the estrogen thank you so much everybody wait